everybody. Howdy. You know, it's interesting because I hate spiders. And uh, even though they give me the creeps, like we showed at the beginning, the spider webs. You know, when they got this perfectly symmetrical, you know, geometric, you know, shape and the dew hanging on it, it can be a thing of beauty. Yeah, it, there, really, there really is a lot of things like that in nature that are a thing of beauty. And you know, that's what Watchtower paints its organization as, a thing of beauty. I mean, after all, you know, when you study with Jehovah's Witnesses, you'll study from this book. What does the Bible really teach? Yeah, you know, they have this picture in the first couple of pages, and it looks beautiful. They quote from Revelation 21, 4, He will wipe out every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more. Neither will mourning, nor outcry, nor pain be any more. And then they quote Isaiah 3, uh, 35, 6, The lame one will climb up, just as a stag does. Isaiah 35, 5, The eyes of the blind ones will be opened. John 5, 28, 29, All those in the memorial tomb will come out. Isaiah 33, 24, No resident will say, I am sick. So they paint this picture of something very beautiful, very desirable. Yeah, I mean, even in their old Live Forever book, here's a picture of their perceived paradise. And really, there's, there's a wild bird landing on that woman's finger. I mean, honestly, who wouldn't want that? Right, Ginger? <laughs> so they, they paint this, this beautiful picture of the organization. I mean... They've got beautiful buildings that are clean and spotless. Oh, it's so clean. You know, they... The love. They have what they call the spiritual paradise. You could go anywhere in the world and proclaim that you're one of Jehovah's Witnesses and you'll have a brotherhood to rely on. I mean, really, that's, that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? So you may be wondering at this point, what the heck are... They do is showing spider webs and the point they're trying to make. Well, watch the next clip. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? See, yeah. you could look at that spider web as an absolute thing of beauty in nature. But, but it's a death trap. In reality, <laughs> it's like when Jehovah's Witnesses study this book with you. They present the beautiful side of Watchtower. What they fail to tell you is the dark side. And that's what we're going to explore because... During the 2015 summer conventions, Jehovah's Witnesses presented a public talk on Saturday morning that was entitled, It's a symposium, Imitate Jesus, Not Satan. And we're going to be going, let's talk number three, Be Truthful. Ah, because those of us in the XJW community and those currently that are Jehovah's Witnesses watching these, um, watching this commission hearing, have come to a quick realization that Watchtower has truly been less than truthful. Hi, GM. <laughs> so. And they have nobody to talk to. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So even if the Watchtower and Bible Track Society appears to be a thing of beauty, we're going to see that the organization is truly less than truthful. And it's a trap that it's sucks trap. the life out of you. Exactly. Yeah. So I think we have a clip. We have a clip. Isn't it true that the pull to be less than truthful at times can be very strong? This can affect both young 
and old alike. Another way we can contribute to the oneness, rejecting false stories that are designed to separate us from Jehovah's organization. As an example, think about the apostate-driven lies and dishonesties that Jehovah's organization is permissive toward pedophiles. I mean, that is ridiculous, isn't it? And you accept, of course, that your organization, including people in positions of responsibility like elders, are not immune from the problem of child sexual abuse. Uh, that appears to be the case. And do you accept, Mr. Jackson, that many of the efforts that are being made by different people and organizations to highlight the issue of child sexual abuse and try and find solutions are genuine efforts to improve the situation? I do accept that, and that's why I'm happy to testify. And that such efforts are not necessarily an attack on your organization or its system of beliefs? Uh, we understand that too. You described earlier in your testimony that the work of the, this Royal Commission is beneficial. Do you accept then that the Royal Commission's efforts are genuine and well-intentioned? I certainly do. And that's why we came into the Royal Commission hoping that collectively something would come forward that would help us as well as everybody else. And would you disagree then with anyone who said that the efforts to highlight and deal with child sexual abuse in the Jehovah's Witness Church uh, is engaging in apostate lies? Uh, I guess that's a, a broad question because sometimes those who make these accusations make many other accusations as well. Uh, but let me assure you, uh, the person making the accusation is not the main thing. The main thing is, is there some basis to the accusation? And wow! <laughs> this, is, this is really great. I think Evie's right. This is one of those pretzel twisting things that they try to do. Well, here's here's the thing. I've said this before in other videos that when you use the word apostate, it just triggers an absolute, I don't know, hate, disdain, conflict in the Amen. mind of Jehovah's Witnesses. Because now even though the um, the lawyer didn't use apostate like we hear, he used apostatic. Apostate? Lies, yeah, apostate lies, but it, Jeffrey Jackson recognized it as apostate lies. So he makes his comment similar to this, those who make those accusations make other accusations as well. The person doesn't matter is, is there some basis in the accusation? Well, he forgot exactly what he said moments ago because the word apostate screwed up his mind because just moments before this Jackson you confirmed the those accusations yeah. by agreeing that even the elders are not immune to child sexual abuse you said well that would appear to be the case and then you do one of these but, like uh -oh. uh oh that wasn't supposed to come out so no matter what you try and say to do Watchtower Jackson confirmed these accusations, you guys are done. Yep. And that they're not all apostate lies. They're not apostate lies. Exactly. So you go back earlier in this video and you got, you know, Mr. Clown Let saying, you know, apostate driven Ridiculous. lies. Jackson just destroyed that because he confirmed these are not apostate driven lies. Yep. Unbelievable. So what's interesting is now you know why we put the spider web because it looks like a thing of beauty until you smack into it and, and guess what you get all tangled up in it and it means your death. Yeah and there's really only two ways out of it and we'll explore that at the very end. We get another clip? Yeah. Okay. However, Jehovah and Jesus are truthful. Psalm 31 and verse 5 calls Jehovah the God of truth. And like his father, Jesus also always spoke the truth. John 18 says that he bore witness 
to the truth. Well, in imitation of Jehovah and Jesus, we too endeavor to serve uh, with truth. Now, Satan, though, is the enemy of truth. We know that uh, John 8, calls Satan a liar and the father of the lie. And since the whole world is lying in his power, his lying influence permeates the world today. And do you see yourselves as Jehovah God's spokespeople on earth? Uh, that, I think, would seem to be quite presumptuous to, to say that uh, we are the only spokesperson that God is using. Uh, the, clear, the scriptures clearly show uh, that uh, someone can act in harmony with God's Spirit in uh, giving comfort and help in the congregations. Okay, for me personally, when I first heard this, I thought that this was one of the most... Um, Profound? Profound things that um, were spoken at these hearings because all of us in the XJW community are very much quick to say, Ah, there you have it. There you have it. It's presumptuous to think that we are the only channel God's using, basically. But be so then why do we have to listen to them? Well, there again. <laughs> there again. But let's just reconfirm what Jehovah's Witnesses do honestly believe. Yeah. So I have the Worship the Only True God book on page 134, paragraph 14. <laughs> we do well to ask ourselves, do I truly appreciate how Jehovah is directing his visible organization? Do my attitude, speech, and actions reflect that? Reasoning on the following points can help each of us to make such an analysis. Okay, so we're going to analyze this. If I truly submit to Christ as head of the congregation, then as indicated in the following scriptures, what will I be doing? And of course, there are the scriptures about preaching door to door. When I appreciably accept the spiritual provisions that come through the slave class and its governing body, for whom am I showing respect? And then they have Luke ten sixteen. So there you have it, you know. Yep. Listening, you know, and accept this slave class and its governing body. See, the governing body. Paragraph 15. Jehovah is guiding us today by means of his visible organization under Christ. Our attitude toward this arrangement demonstrates how we feel about the issue of sovereignty. Right. Well, it's interesting to note that in the articles that we, we read, um, when it says God's directing organization or directing his organization, he doesn't use the word organizations. It's not uh, plural. In all of Watchtower's writing, it's singular, God's organization. So when this question was asked and Jeffrey Jackson came out and said, well, it would be presumptuous to think, you know, we all thought that truth was going to change. But you know what? I caught something watching this the fourth or fifth time around. Jackson cleverly evaded answering that question. But again, 1992-1115, pages 19 through 20, entitled, Serve Jehovah Loyally, paragraph 7. Especially should appointed elders appreciate the nourishing spiritual food provided by God through the faithful slave. And we all know that that's the, uh, well, now it's been redefined as the governing body. Years ago, a few elders lacked such appreciation. One observer noted that these men were critical of the articles in the Watchtower not wanting to accept it as God's channel of truth. Ah, what? What did you write in 92? The Watchtower is God's channel of truth? Well, as far as I know, Watchtower and Babel Craft Society are the only ones that distribute the Watchtower. I don't see the 700 Club going from door to door <laughs> with a magazine entitled Watchtower. I don't see, well, hell, People's Temple never went distributing a magazine called The Watchtower. No, it's only Jehovah's Witnesses. Carrying on. 
always trying to influence others in their way of thinking. However, loyal elders never try to influence others to reject any of the spiritual food provided by God through the faithful slave. And we know they've gotten stronger on that stance because oh, yeah. if you even question anything in the literature, you get thrown out and disfellowshipped. It's a gross sin. Yeah. yeah. Know that firsthand, don't Well, yeah, because we're just <laughs> getting emails now from just brothers being disfellowshipped for doing nothing but questioning the child abuse thing. Well, look at us, too. Uh, well, there you go. Yeah. Living proof, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, paragraph 8. As Jehovah's dedicated witnesses, all of us, all of us must be loyal to him and to his organization. There it is again. Singular. Doesn't say organizations. See, there is no presumptuousness presented in this. And to his organization. That is a perceived fact of Jehovah's Witnesses. We should never even contemplate turning aside from God's wonderful light, pursuing an apostate course that can lead to spiritual death now and eventual destruction. Okay, so now we have another article. This was printed in 1981. This was a watchtower. March 1st, pages 24 through 27. Do you appreciate the faithful and discreet slave? This is one of my favorites. Who really is a faithful and discreet slave? Jehovah's Witnesses believe that this parable pertains to the one, one true congregation of Jehovah of Jesus anointed anointed followers one true congregation does not leave any leeway for a governing body member to say well that would be presumptuous on our part to think that see Jackson your own literature condemns you okay but this particular article happens to do with the disfellowshipping of Ray Franz, even though they don't mention names. We know who they were talking exactly, to. Exactly, because down in another paragraph it says, the objectors may argue that not, of Christ, not all of Christ's anointed disciples have a share in preparing the spiritual food. So we know if that's you, changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because if you read Crisis of Conscience... Uh, written by Ray Fringe, you will see that this was one of the things that he was trying to get, you know, the governing body at that time to understand. Which that they the did, faith, except a couple of years ago. Well, just a couple of years ago, they did change their doctrine. So the guardians of doctrine, Jeffrey, you guys changed your doctrine, didn't you? You actually accepted an apostate thinking an apostate way of doing things. So now, does that make you an apostate organization? Guardians of doctrine? Guardi no, no, it's guardians of apostasy is what you should well, really call Well, I was going to say, them. is that anything like guardians of the galaxy? Guardians of the galaxy, yeah. So I guess they owe Ray Franz an apology then, don't they? Well, I think they need to dig them up and apologize. But the thing that I like best about this piece of crap article is towards the end of it, Overwhelming credentials. Oh, I oh, yeah. remember. Hey, 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 hey. Eagles. <laughs> Noah's wife. Noah's wife, yeah. The faithful and discreet slave, a.k.a. the governing body now, has abundant credentials. Following is a partial list of spiritual and prophetic <laughs> designations applying to or being represented in the remnant of Jesus anointed followers since the notable year of 1919 and then it goes on with a whole list of just just I mean really um, well I like number 80 he here Jehovah's Witnesses Isaiah 43 okay 10. yeah yeah this is this is their overwhelming credential is that they're called Jehovah's Witnesses but Jehovah's Witnesses here is some scriptural truth. Scriptural truth. 
Why are you called Jehovah? You ask a Jehovah Witness why are they called Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, well the scripture in Isaiah they'll, 43. They'll be true. Yeah. Are you are of, my witnesses is the utterance of Jehovah. So you proudly bear in witness about Jehovah. But you absolutely do not comprehend Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses, think. Think for a moment. Because this is one of the ways that you can escape the web of death. Okay? Now, this is just before Christ ascends to heaven. His disciples are asking him, in verse 6, When now they had assembled, they went asking him, Lord, Jesus Christ, because they're having a face-to-face -face conversation with him, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time? He said to them, It does not belong to you to get knowledge of the times or seasons which the Father has placed in his own jurisdiction. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit arrives upon you, and you will be witnesses of Jehovah both... And, oh, no, wait, wait, excuse me. He says, you will be witnesses of me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, to the most distant parts of the earth. Whoa, so Jehovah's Witnesses, you're being called by the wrong name. You should be witnesses of Jesus, because Jesus said you would be witnesses of me. So they don't fit that criteria. They don't fit that criteria. So, so when you use overwhelming credentials, you don't even mention in here that you're witnesses of Jesus. Yeah. So we're going to go to something a little more modern. And this is from the brochure, Who Are Doing Jehovah's Will Today? And we're going to go to, I believe it's page 20. How does the governing body function today? We're going to go down to the subheading, It is responsive, responsive to the direction of God's Spirit. The governing body looks to the universal sovereign Jehovah and to the head of the congregation, Jesus, for guidance. Oh, really? Yeah. Its members do not regard themselves as the leader of God's people. Whoa, what? whoa, whoa, whoa. What? So its the, members... Do not regard themselves as leaders of God's okay, no, people. No, 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 wait, wait a minute. First it says the governing body looks to the universal sovereign Jehovah. And Jesus. And Jesus. For guidance. So when it says its members, it, it, it qualifies the governing body. When it says its members, they're, they're referring to the governing body, Do right? Do not regard themselves, themselves as leaders so maybe Jeffrey Jackson thought he was telling the truth when he says it would be presumptuous to think that they are God's sole spokesperson. But then my, the question comes up, why do you Jehovah's Witnesses have to listen to him then? And why do you give, why do you give in to their disfellowshipping of policies? If these guys have printed this on JW.org, that they do not regard themselves as leaders of God's people then you do not have to listen to them. Well, what gives them the authority then to disfellowship and... No authority. That, that Discipline. That takes their authority. This is how stupid they are. This is how literally stupid they are because that little sentence like that takes away the authority of the governing body. Yeah. <sighs> Just... But... <laughs> but... If you go back and listen closely to the clip... When he says that would be presumptuous, presumptuous of us to say, you know, the Holy Spirit can uh, be directed through the members of the congregation also. He, he didn't answer that question. He actually evaded it by, by, by cleverly giving a different qualification to the question. And unfortunately, these lawyers don't know enough to catch stuff like this, to re- repose the question because Jeffrey Jackson did evade answering that question. You know, it sounded good at the beginning. It honestly did. Yeah, it would be presumptuous to think that, oh boy, we got him. But listen to the whole answer and he actually evaded that entire question because when he mm -hmm. said it would be presumptuous to think that, he actually qualified their congregations as also 
uh, the channel through who God is using. So he, I mean, that was very cleverly disguised, Mr. Potato Head. But you know what? I ain't done with you yet. We want to imitate Jesus by being truthful. And Jesus taught his disciples to do just that. Notice his very clear direction at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 37. Let's turn there together. Jesus really doesn't mince words here. Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. He says, just let your word yes mean yes, your no, no. If you take the Bible in your hand, please, and repeat after me, I swear by Almighty God, I swear by Almighty God, that the evidence I shall give in this Royal Commission, that the evidence I shall give in this Royal Commission, shall be the truth, shall be the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, thank you. Take a seat again, please. Thank you. Now, interestingly, at times, Jesus didn't always give people direct answers. Recall when the chief priests asked him by what authority he performs his miraculous signs. In that situation, Jesus didn't answer their question. And the reason why is because enemies of truth don't deserve information that they would use to harm God's servants. Likewise, we're not obligated to give truthful information to people who aren't entitled to it. But aside from dealing with enemies of truth, we should be very cautious about selective truth. One other aspect, and that is the... As a soldier, as a Jehovah's Witness, that as a soldier of Christ, you are essentially in a theocratic warfare um, against those that uh, have a different view of... um, Religion. Is that the case? No, I don't think so. Are you aware of the doctrine of theocratic warfare? No. Never heard of it? Well, I've heard the expression, but I'm not really sure what it means. But you don't know what it means? No. And we see it, don't we? We see that people lie to gain selfish advantage or to avoid potential embarrassment. It doesn't matter to them that lying is morally wrong. And that lying breaks that. You know, when you pit these guys against one another and put it all together, you know, it gets real humorous. Yeah, it does. And ridiculous. Yeah, it really shows that what they (laughs) present to the public, like during their conventions, is totally opposite than what these men are willing to do to protect their theology, their doctrines, or whatever. Their organization. Their organization or how they will control people. Yep. And that's what it truly comes down to. Yeah. But you know what, Watchtower? I'm going to use your own, well, I'm not going to call it a Bible, the New World Translation of Holy Scriptures, Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. There are six things that Jehovah hates. Yes, seven things that are detestable. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart plotting wicked schemes, and feet that are quickly uh, that run quickly to evil, a false witness who lies with every breath, and someone sowing contentions among brothers. Now isn't it funny that there are six things, yes seven things, they become seven because lying and a false witness requalifies lying. There are actually six things but lying is mentioned twice because a false witness who lies with every breath. And those of us in the XJW community very very quick to hear those lies. But the thing is Watchtower, governing body, because of this false witness that Jackson gave, you are actually sending contentions among the brothers. Because Kim and I know for a fact that 
current Jehovah's Witnesses are watching these testimonies, and confused. they're as confused Upset. as hell. Exactly. Just need somebody to talk to? Just need somebody to talk to. But you know, there's something else that Watchtower likes to use. Because Titus 3.10... Watchtower really doesn't use this, but Mikey is going to. <laughs> and it comes right again from your New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. Titus 3.10. Because remember, when you listen to these um, hearings, Jackson says that they are guardians of doctrines. He didn't say they're guardians of the truth. They're guardians of doctrines. Now, let me show you how important that statement becomes and how it's an absolute fallacy because when Watchtower originally printed this blood booklet, blood medicine and the law of God, the doctrine was that if you took blood fractions, you would be breaking God's law. That was the doctrine that was set out, what, in 1961 when they printed this? What happened to your guarding doctrine? Because recently, your doctrine changed to where now taking blood fractions is a conscience oh, matter. Well, remember, the commission asked him about that. And remember, he said that, well, things can change in medical you know, techniques yeah. and stuff improve. So I guess that's new light. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's new light. But the thing is, is the doctrines don't change. The Bible Watch didn't Tower. change. The Bible's never changed. The, the, uh, the Catholic belief in the Trinity has never changed. The Catholic belief in hellfire has never changed. But yet your doctrines change. And you know why? Titus 3.10 explains it. As for a man who promotes a sect, reject him after a first and second admonition. See, the reason why your doctrines are changing, Jehovah's Witnesses, is because you're in a sect. You're in a cult. Okay? You have to understand that. Now, I want to go to 1 Timothy 3. Jehovah's Witnesses. Again, you should be familiar with this set of scriptures, especially those that are the brothers. 1 Timothy 3. And we're going to go down to verse 7. Here, Timothy, or Paul, is laying out the qualifications of a man reaching out for an office of overseer. Or a governing body. Or governing body, either <laughs> one. Verse 7, moreover, he should have a fine testimony from outsiders so that he does not fall into reproach and a snare of the devil. Or a spider web of the devil. Or a spider web. <laughs> because it truly becomes his death. Yeah. But now, let's look at, see, now right now, Jeffrey Jackson, you do not have a fine testimony from those on the outside. Because you admitted in, this proceed, in these proceedings that what we're saying are not apostate lies. See, you, you just screwed yourself, pal. Verse 13, for the, man, for the men who minister in a fine manner are acquiring for themselves a fine standing and great freeness of speech in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. Hey, buddy, old pal, you just lost your freeness of speech. You don't qualify to even pass mics now. <laughs> well, I don't think he passes mics. That's below well, it, him. It, it, <laughs> well, okay, but what did we see today or yet yesterday? On, on another church's a, marquee. Church's marquee. It said, If serving others is beneath you, then being a leader is beyond you. Is beyond your reach. 
Exactly. Jeffrey Jackson, according to your own holy scriptures, you lost your freedom of speech because you're promoting a sect. Because on in these hearings, you you um, varied or you um, what's the word I want? You, twisted. You twisted or you took a different path than what Watchtower teaches. Because and all of us know we this, all see it. What the doctrine of the organization is, and that's why what you said. Uh, are making your people walk away from you now because now they finally see what the truth truly is. So getting back to my point about there are two ways of escaping this web and unfortunately some of our dear brothers and sisters have already taken it and the spider demonstrated what it was. Death. Because of what Watchtower is doing in ruining people's lives they see no other way out but then to end their lives and that's a sad tragedy in being a cult or a sect as Titus brings out because you governing body that's all you're doing is you are promoting a sect and the second way and the second way is is that if somebody sees the trouble that you're in. If somebody sees that this grasshopper is in a web of death, they can actually reach and pluck that grasshopper out of that web. Jehovah's Witnesses, the apostates, even people that have never been Jehovah's Witnesses see the trap you're in. That's why they're educating themselves. Kim and I spent four hours yesterday in Albuquerque with a man that's never been a Jehovah Witness that wants to learn how to wake you up to pluck you out of this web of death. Hi Aaron. Yes. Loved having lunch with you yesterday. Enjoyed it. So you see Jehovah's Witnesses there is another way out. Yeah you may lose some family members temporarily because when this organization does finally go down and or maybe this commission is going to put enough pressure on Watchtower that they may have to concede and do away with the shunning policy. We I don't know. So. Only time will tell what's going to happen. But there is a way out of this web, Jehovah's Witnesses. You just have to recognize and be willing to take the hands from the apostate community and pull you away from this wretched organization and struggle struggle against that web that has you entangled yeah don't let this organization suck any more life out of you because they've already sucked the knife uh, enough life out of all of us yeah so, so thanks for watching and I want to thank everybody for your emails and comments and messages and I am really trying hard <laughs> to get them all answered, you know, and I apologize for taking so long and just have so, between the advertisements that I get every day and then all of the real messages, you know, so I apologize and thank you for your patience with me. Yeah. And, you know, if there's anything really important that you need to get a hold of us right away, just write urgent in the subject and send it through watchtower.exposed. Yes. And I usually, you know, go through those first. Yeah, because if you try to message us through the comment section um, from below our videos, we don't always see those because we're just, we just can't. it's just inundated. Um, and for those of you um, like, um, like Shark Bite, if you see something, or even Carmelita Reinhardt, if, if you friends see something that appears to be real urgent, please let us know because you, you folks know how to also contact us on Facebook. Yeah. And we usually will get those information, uh, that information every day. So yeah. please, because we do recognize right now, we're not the only ones, Mark and Cora, um, everybody that's doing YouTube videos, um, we're just getting inundated with 
Jehovah's Witnesses People that that Which just great. that mean, just can't stand it no more. They they just cannot this stand it. This warms our heart, you know, and we're yeah. trying to help as many of you as we can. So thank you for your patience with us. And yes, we do want to help. You know, oh, absolutely you, you as much need, as we can. They just need someone to talk to. Yeah. So we understand. Believe yeah, we've been there, done that. In contact with a gentleman in. Um, in Texas right now, past couple of days, because of what he's seeing right here. GM. GM. Um, it, he kind of chuckled and laughed and said, because it's kind of ironic that Jehovah's Witnesses are going to the apostate community for encouragement. So keep yeah. up the good work, because Jehovah's Witnesses truly have nowhere to turn except to ex-members. So let's be as encouraging as we can in understanding um, for what they're going through. And Aaron, the man we had lunch with yesterday, um, told us about a new YouTube channel. It's called XJW Critical Thinker. And I can't remember if we've watched any of his videos yet or not. So you might want to check that out. And, you know, all the rest of you, our friends, you know, we just love you guys so much. And welcome new subscribers. Yep. And uh, welcome to our insanity. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun being insane. Really, yes. it is. <laughs> yeah. We have way too much fun. Yeah. So we love you all, and uh, we hope you have a great day. Bye. They don't care. They don't even think about it. Well, we don't want to be anything like them. We don't want to imitate uh, Satan even slightly. You see, let's take someone who's baptized at a, at a young age, and then as they lie elsewhere and they want to choose some other system of belief they're then still going to be faced with the stark choice that we've identified aren't they that's true so on that basis i suggest to you that that policy and practice of your organization is in conflict with the jehovah's witnesses belief as you've said it it is in freedom of religious choice and no, we don't see it that way, but you're entitled to your opinion. And I suggest the manner in which your organization has dealt with allegations of child sexual abuse uh, has also presented problems. Uh, there have been changes in policies over the last 20 or 30 years where we've tried to address uh, some of those uh, uh, problem areas. And by the fact that we've changed the policy, would indicate that the original policies weren't perfect. Now, do you recognize, Mr. Jackson, and in asking this question, let me make it clear, I'm not suggesting it's peculiar to the Jehovah's Witness organization. There are many, many organizations in this position. But do you accept that the Jehovah's Witness organization has a problem with child abuse amongst its members? I accept that child abuse is a problem right throughout the community, and it's something that we've had to deal with as well.